Hello, I'm Jashikins, and welcome to another episode of Jash Reads. Tonight, we're finishing up Chapter 4 from Mockingjay by Susan Collins. We hand the meat over to Greasy Say in the kitchen. She likes District 13 well enough, even though she thinks the cooks are somewhat lacking in imagination. But a woman who came up with a palatable wild dog and rhubarb stew is <laughs> bound to feel as if her hands are tied here. Exhausted from hunting and my lack of sleep, I go back to my compartment to find it stripped bare. <laughs> Only to remember, we've been moved because of Buttercup. I make my way up to the top floor and find compartment E. It looks exactly like compartment 307. Except for the window, two feet wide, eight inches high, centered at the top of the outside wall. There's a heavy metal plate that fastens over it, but right now it's propped open, and a certain cat is nowhere to be seen. I stretch out on my bed, and a shaft of afternoon sunlight plays on my face. Next thing I know, my sister is waking me for 1800 reflection. Prim tells me they've been announcing the assembly since lunch. The entire population except those needed for essential jobs, is required to attend. We follow directions to the collective, a huge room that easily holds the thousands who show up. You can tell it was built for a larger gathering, and perhaps it held one before the POPs epidemic. Prim quickly points out the widespread fallout from that disaster, the pox scars on people's bodies, the slightly disfigured children. They've suffered a lot here, she says. After this morning, I'm in no mood to feel sorry for 13. No more than we did in 12, I say. I see my mother lead in a group of mobile patients, still wearing their hospital nightgowns and robes. Finnick stands among them, looking dazed, but gorgeous. In his hands, he holds a piece of thin rope, less than a foot in length, too short for even him to fashion into a usable noose. His fingers move rapidly, automatically tying and unraveling various knots as he gazes about. Probably part of his therapy. I cross him and say, Hey, Finnick. He doesn't seem to notice, so I nudge him to get his attention. Finnick, how are you doing? Katniss, he says, gripping my hand. Relieved to see a familiar face, I think. Why are we meeting here? I told Coin I'd be her Mockingjay, but I made her promise to give the other tributes immunity if the rebels won. I tell him, in public, so there are plenty of witnesses. Oh, good, because I worry about that with Annie, that she'll say something that could be construed as Traitorous without knowing it, says Finnick. Annie. Uh oh. Totally forgot her. Don't worry. I took care of it. I give Finnick's hand a squeeze and head straight for the podium at the front of the room. Coin, who is glancing over her statement, raises her eyebrows at me. I need you to add 
Annie Cresta to the immunity list. I tell her. The president frowns slightly. Who's that? She's Finnick Odair's... What? I don't really know what to call her. She's Finnick's friend from District 4. Another victor. She was arrested and taken to the Capitol when the arena blew up. Oh, the mad girl. That's not really necessary, she says. We don't make a habit of punishing anyone that frail. I think of the scene I walked in on this morning, of Octavia huddled against the wall, of how Coin and I must have vastly different definitions of frailty. But I only say, no, then it shouldn't be a problem to add Annie. All right, says the president, penciling in Annie's name. Do you want to be up here with me for an announcement? <laughs> I shake my head. I didn't think so. Better hurry and lose yourself in the crowd. I'm about to begin. I make my way back to Finnick. Words are another thing now wasted in 13. Coin calls the audience to attention and tells them I have consented to be the Mockingjay, provided the other victors, Peta, Johanna, and Obaria and Annie will be granted full pardon for any damage they do to the rebel cause. In the rumbling of the crowd, I hear the dissent. I suppose no one doubted I would want to be the Mockingjay. So naming a price, one that spares possible enemies, angers them. I stand indifferent to the hostile looks thrown my way. The president allows a few moments of unrest, and then continues in her brisk fashion. Only now, the words coming out of her mouth are news to me. But in return for this unprecedented request, Soldier Everdeen has promised to devote herself to our cause. It follows that any deviance from her mission in either motive or deed will be viewed as a break in this agreement. The immunity would be terminated and the fate of the four victors determined by the law of District 13. As would her own. Thank you. In other words, <laughs> I step out of line, and we're all dead. And that's it for tonight. Could I have done better? I could have always done better. I could have spent hours on each and every single bloody blah words and stuff. And uh, I just want to show you a little special guest here. Uh, I don't think the, the the webcam can really pick it up, but that little yellow thing on the other yellow thing is a Silene. She's like a little, little napping. I decided not to put her back in the cage before filming. Uh, and if you're wondering where her cage is, that's actually what she's sitting on. I just put blankets over it so it'd be a little more comfortable and cool. Yeah, so that's a little bird you're talking about, and I would put her back in the cage, but she was so already resting, and I was like, oh, as long as she's not falling off during the episode, I'm I'm fine. Because, yeah, sometimes she'll be like, oh, yeah, I'm just resting here, and then you turn away for five seconds, she's like, I'm going to explore. Hey, 
I, I meant to do this, but I, I don't know where to go now. <laughs> but anyways, now that I've actually finished reading chapter 4, I'll post, not post, I'll say my comments. It was, it's just, you, you start to get the sense that District 13 and President Coyne may not be who she's, you know, not all good. I mean, is Katniss right in her theory that her prep team was tortured merely to send a message? And, I mean, Plutarch and Fulvia, <laughs> I think that's the name. I mean, her and one of the prep team's name are so similar that I get them, you know, confused. But it's just like Plutarch and her are all, oh, we're too important. We would never get tortured like that. And Katniss has to point out, hey, guess what? I, I was important as a victor before, and guess what happened? Yeah. And I did like her conversation with Gail because... Katniss is like, I like this team, and oh my god, I'm actually defending them, and, you know, her trying to explain to Gail why, why she has feelings for her prep team is, is powerful, because, like, Gail just liked them, and at least she's able to convince him somewhat, and yeah, <laughs> coins are threatened, like, Hey, if you don't stay in line, there's going to be trouble. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what are your thoughts on Chapter 4? Uh, remember, no spoilers for later on in the book, but you know, you can spoil, of course, The Hunger Games and Catching Fire since Mockingjay is the third and final book in the trilogy. Therefore, there should be conversation about how the first two books affect this one. So, what are your feelings on Chapter 4, especially regarding Cadmus and her prep team? Because that whole friendship uh, with people that are just sending you out to die... It's sort of interesting. Ah, yes. The smell of angst in the evening. Okay, well, bloopers should be out later. Oh, that, that, that sparked some reaction from you, Selene. <laughs> just, like, worried when I start to see her move. Like, don't... Why do you have to start moving now? This, she must really be fucking waiting for the bloopers or trying to get onto camera more. <laughs> but anyways, that should be out of this week and my fiancé is coming over. And my phone wanted to interact with that for some reason. And so, whether I'll release them later tonight... Maybe, but if they're not released later tonight, they probably won't be released until Monday. And if you have watched this dramatic reading and you've liked what you've heard of Mockingjay so far, and you might want, and so you want to get your own copy, maybe because you're like. I can't wait till the next episode Jessica's puts out is I need to read it right now. Uh, <laughs> or if you want to read it because you hey, want to see, you get your own interpretation out of it. And yes, I am just reading words from a page, but I'm deciding the inflections, how to emote, and I'm not exactly an actor or, you know, even a professional actor, so sometimes my what I think is good emoting will be off. And if for those reasons or any others, 
if you want your own copy and also want to help support me, there's a link to buy the book in the description if you're watching this on the YouTubes and if you're watching this on my blog, the blog um, the ad is at the very bottom of this post. So, love you. Keep watching. And I have not forgotten. Here comes the part where I take a shot, aka a random amount of sake. And you can take an actual shot or just a random amount of alcohol if you want to. And if you don't drink alcohol for any various reasons, drink some water or milk. I was going to say water and sake. Like, oh, I said no alcohol. <laughs> and. Until next video, goodbye. Well, that was that was awesome, Saki, and I hope you have an equally awesome time of day where you are.